Heidi ho there friends and neighbors, Bobby here today. Hey folks, today we have a 2005 Buick LaCrosse with the 3.6 liter engine in it. And I have a trouble code of P0128 thermostat code. So today friends, I'm going to be, be trying to attempt to replace this thermostat and housing assembly, okay? Uh, it looks like it's pretty difficult. Um, well, I don't know. It might not be too bad once I get get things kind of taken apart here. Uh, actually, it's actually located on the back side of the engine, kind of down here where I'm pointing this flashlight at. Really can't see it right now. So the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, remove my air duct here. Probably go ahead and re remove half of my air filter housing right here, just so I can get my arms and everything down in there to uh, access everything. And I'll try to film uh, the procedure of doing this. I have noticed one thing, the mounted to this new housing is the uh, heater hose tubes. And I can see the other end of them right here where these two clamps are. So I will be removing these two uh, hoses right here because this, uh, this steel line goes down to the thermostat house. I'll show you right here. This is a new one and it actually attaches right here, okay? So that's got to be removed, and then we'll, uh, it looks like there's three bolts that holds this uh, uh, housing in place that comes with new ones, comes with a new gasket. So we're going to go ahead and tear into it, friends, and see how to get this done. We'll learn together. Okay, first thing we're going to try to do here is disconnect both of these uh, heater hose lines here. With a pair of pliers, we'll press back the spring clamps and remove both of those. Okay, with both of those hoses removed, we're gonna go down here and see if we can take the uh, <clears throat> two 10 millimeter headed bolts off of the other piece. Now I've already decided that this bracket right here is gonna be in my way. It don't, and uh, it has three bolts holding it in place. This 10 millimeter headed bolt here to the exhaust. It's right down here where my finger is, a 15 millimeter headed bolt. And then all the way down here, the most complicated one to get loose. Let's see if I can shine a light down here. So you can kind of see, there's a big wiring harness that goes on, but right underneath that uh, wiring harness uh, wrapped in, looks like tin foil, is uh, gonna be a 13 millimeter headed nut. So we're gonna remove all three of those and get this bracket out of our way. Okay, here's what that bracket looks like removed. And now with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and lay it out of the way. As you can see, we can definitely get our hand in here a lot easier now. We can actually get on, get on just about everything now. So let's go ahead and get a 10 millimeter socket. See if we can take that uh, heater hose pipe loose. Okay, folks, I think I have just dealt with the most difficult part of this job, okay? And it is this tube assembly, all right? Now, um, it does come out in this fashion right here. These two pipes here, I'm actually kind of showing you by sort of putting it back in here, but um, you will have to finagle it just a little bit and it'll kind of go underneath the throttle body and uh, in between the exhaust here and you will be able to work that back into place, okay? You'll have to kind of turn it a little bit, but you don't have to force it or anything. It will come out. Now, let me show you what I had to do to get these two bolts. I'm gonna lay it this way, just like it was bolted up to the unit, okay? Um, let's see here, I'm gonna hold it so that y'all can tell what I'm talking about. Uh, right here is the top bolt, okay? The top bolt, which goes right here. Here's our new one. It's gonna go right there, okay? What I had to use on the top bolt was a 10 millimeter socket, quarter inch drive, impact uh, swivel, and about a 15 inch extension, okay? And where I had to go in at was right here. On that side of the exhaust is where I had to go in to get to that bolt, all right? That's the only thing that I could do to get to that bolt. And that really wasn't that hard. The more difficult one is the lower bolt, which is this one here. And it goes right here, okay? I had to use a quarter inch drive ratchet and a deep well quarter inch drive 10 millimeter socket and I just had to reach up in here and do it just a little bit at a time, okay? Now, 
And as soon as I broke it loose, I couldn't really spin it out with my fingers. So when I go back together with this, I'm gonna take the old bolts, I'm gonna clean the threads up really good, and I'm gonna make sure that they spin in like butter, okay? To where when I put this thing back together, I can spin it all the way down by finger. I can get my fingers in there. I'll spin them all the way down real close and then I don't have to do as much wrenching as I get that back together. It looks like the rest of it is not gonna to be too awfully difficult. But the next thing that we'll work on here, you can actually see the thermostat housing now. There's three bolts holding it on and uh, that's not gonna to be too difficult to get to. And then there's a bolt out here at the end of the pipe. I'm, I'm talking about right down here. I'm pointing to it right there. We're gonna to get to that bolt and um, back it off to move the pipe out of the way. It's probably got an O-ring fitting on it. And then we should have our thermostat housing off of the vehicle. Okay, real quick, I went ahead and took the bolt right out of here that held the tube to the thermostat housing. And then as you can see right there where the missing bolt is, that's where the bracket goes over and goes into the back of the head. So I went ahead and removed it. It was a 15 millimeter. You'll need like a swivel uh, on a 3 8 uh, impact swivel. I'd use about a one foot extension to get that and a 13 millimeter swivel on the other one. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull that apart and then we're gonna get in there with a 10 millimeter and unbolt this thermos, uh, thermostat housing. Okay, here's the old thermostat. <clears throat> Took about two minutes to get it out of here. We just used our quarter inch drive air ratchet with our impact swivel, short 10 millimeter socket and zipped them right out. There's plenty of room now. That one, that one, and that one. Now, one thing that we will do now, uh, let's see, let me get the flashlight. We will get in there and clean up the surface of the head, of the uh, head or intake, whatever, back of the block that we're dealing with there. We'll get that surface there cleaned up with a Ziz wheel and um, right here on the pipe, notice there's an O-ring. That O-ring did not come with the kit. Neither did the O-ring from the uh, pipe. I'll show it to you right quick. There's an O-ring right there on that pipe that did not come with the kit. Neither did the gasket that holds this pipe to this thing. So I'm gonna be running back up to the parts store tonight or tomorrow morning and get those items and then we'll get the new one installed and wrap this video up. Okay, folks, hey, we're back here on day two. I had to go get some parts and I ended up having to go to the dealership to get the uh, gaskets that did not come with our water pump kit. I got a new O-ring for the <clears throat> outlet tube going to it. I got a new gasket for the uh, for this um, pipe here that goes down. Only thing that we did not, weren't able to find, dealership did not have this O-ring right here It goes on this pipe. So I'm gonna clean it up really good and probably put silicone around it before I put it in place and it should be fine. We went ahead and got these parts. So now what we're gonna work on for the next little bit is getting everything cleaned up. We're gonna clean up this pipe real good, get the old gasket off of here. We're gonna go down inside here on the back of the block. We're gonna clean that surface real good. Uh, put our new O-ring on our tube right here and then we will be ready to start putting this thing back together. Okay, folks, we are ready to start assembly process now. As you can see, we've got that surface on the block cleaned up real good. We've got our new O-ring in place on our pipe. And what we use for cleaning is uh, one thing was a straight uh, scraper. And also we use one of our uh, 90 degree die grinders here with a roll lock disc on there. Combination of both of those got everything cleaned up good. We've got our uh, pipe here cleaned up, got the new gasket in place, bolts are in there, and I actually made sure the threads are good and clean where they'll spin in nice and easy. And here's our thermostat with the new gasket on there as well. Uh, these were steel shim gaskets, and what I did uh, was put a coat of high tack on there, and we're ready to uh, start assembly. So I'm going to start with putting the thermostat in place and getting it tightened down. Okay, now that the thermostat is uh, secured in place and torqued down, and as you notice, I've already put my uh, coolant tube here back on, uh, put the 13 millimeter headed uh, bolt in there, tighten that down, and put the 15 millimeter headed bolt back into the side of the head. So all that is secure, and we're ready to manipulate the pipe in there and then get it started. Remember, that was the most difficult thing coming out 
uh, as far as uh, the unbolting of it. So hopefully it'll go back better since we spent some time on those threads. Okay folks, the hard part is done. The pipe is in place and tightened down and it was a little bit easier since I took the time to clean the threads. Now we're gonna go ahead and hook up our two heater hoses here, all right? You remember that. And we're also gonna put that uh, C-shaped bracket back in place with the three fasteners for it. And then we'll be ready to add some coolant. So let me get that knocked out. Okay, the bracket is back in place. Coolant lines are hooked up. What I'm gonna hook up now is our half of our air box here. Plug in our mass airflow sensor. Put our little air intake tube back on. And there was also a little, uh, let's see if I can find it. Here it is, a uh, little PVC hose going to it. We'll put all that back in place and that'll be pretty much everything, guys. We'll, we'll be putting some coolant in and cranking it up. So stay tuned. Okay, folks, quick little tip here. I'm adding coolant right now in my little no-spill funnel. But back over here, I actually disconnected this one heater hose so that I can uh, let this air bleed out. So we're going to keep filling it, and hopefully coolant will come up through this pipe, and we'll know that we'll be all bled out before we crank it. So I'm going to go ahead and continue adding some coolant. So we get all that air out, and then we'll get this thing cranked up for you. Okay guys, we're, um, we're pretty much wrapping this thing up. I went ahead and filled it until I got coolant running out of this ho uh, tube here. I went ahead and capped it off with the hose. We're about finished here. Um, from now, what we will do, we'll crank it up. We'll let it get up to operating temperature. We'll keep checking on the fluid level here, make sure it doesn't take any more in. <clears throat> and then we'll cap it off and call this job complete. We'll also clear our computer to get rid of that code that I had and then we'll drive it and get the readiness status set on it. Now, folks, on a scale from one to 10, I would call this project in uh, skill ability, you, might, you need to be around an eight, okay? This may not be something that you wanna take on yourself unless you're an experienced mechanic or really mechanically inclined. Once again, I'm gonna show you the tools here you're gonna need. You're gonna need like some swivels here. This is a 10 millimeter swivel an extension quarter inch drive, flashlight, some quarter inch drive stuff here, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter swivel socket, a 10 millimeter little swivel socket, 3 eighths ratchet, I use this as a little breaker bar to break something loose. I use a quarter inch drive air ratchet, a 90 degree die grinder. So you can kind of see a hose remover tool so as you can see, there's, uh, there's the tools that I use. They're, just, they're all just laying right here, getting ready to put them back in the toolbox. But just um, unless you're highly skilled, you may want to let the professional take care of this one for you. Thank you for watching the video today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time. Take care.